Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Sharon Rogers and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you from Wells, Maine. And I am excited. We are in week three of my In Love with Fun Folds series for my Tune In Tuesday classes. Each Tuesday in February, I'm bringing you three unique fun folds. If you would like the class kit, which will come with a completed template for each fun fold, as well as the supplies to make one of the cards that I show, simply place an order of $35 or more before shipping and handling and tax in my online store. You can find the link in the description of this video. Remember, we are in celebration, so if your order is $50 or more, you will also qualify for a free celebration pick. If you have any questions, you can simply email me at stamperhood at gmail.com. Now let's see what we have for fun folds this week. Our first card is a pretty straightforward fun fold. No crazy cuts. It's really just a card within a card. And it opens up like this. So let's go ahead and see how we make this. We want to look for the words base, because we always start with our base. There's base two, here's base one. So I'm going to need a piece that is four and a quarter by eight and a half and one that is three by eight and a half. Well, I happen to know that eight and a half is the width of this piece of cardstock, a standard piece of cardstock. I'm going to cut one of them that is four and a quarter by eight and a half. And I'm gonna cut one that is three by eight and a half. So we'll slide this to three. Now it says on the one that I just cut, three by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that must mean I have to turn it this way and score it at four and one quarter. And on the other one, it says I'm scoring at five and a half. And I recognize that measurement as a standard card size. Let's go ahead and fold and burnish on our score lines. There we go. And I can see that these are going to fit in just like this. So now we need to bring in some other layers. I'm going to need some whites to stamp on or to write on. And I need a couple of designer series paper pieces. So I need one that is four by five and a quarter and one that is two and three quarters by four. I'm going to bring in this Regency Park designer series paper and it's got some really pretty, pretty patterns. Oh, there's the bottom. So, um, and you can see that it goes, um, it's Balmy Blue, Mango Melody, Night of Navy, past, uh, Petal Pink, Shaded Spruce and Sweet Sorbet. You got all sorts of pretty, pretty designs, floral designs on one side, and you've got just some very um, simple designs on the other side. Let's go to, I'm gonna use, not this one. Which one did I have picked out to use? I want some with some balmy blue in it. Um, that one looked nice. And let's see, I think I was going to go with maybe this one. Yeah, that one's pretty too. So now that I need to decide what I want on my, on my back side. I'm not all that crazy about this green background, personally. Some of you may be. So I'm going to use the other side of that for this one. I really like this balmy blue um, color as well. I think that's going to be my backside piece. So that needed to be four by five and a quarter. So four, and I've got a nice, that leaves me with a nice two inch piece left over by five and a quarter. 
which also leaves me a nice strip left over to decorate something with. And then while I'm at it, this other piece down here, this one, this is two and three quarter by four. So I'm gonna get out one of those other designs that I really liked. Uh, I think I will do, I think I'll do this one. And I need two and three quarter by four. I'm gonna cut two and three quarter first, I think. That leaves me a nice big chunk by four. Now let's go ahead and get some white layers cut. I need two white layers that are two and three quarter by four. You can see they're the same on both. So two and three quarters by four. There's one, and here's another. We can go ahead and start attaching things. I get my liquid glue out, and the designer series paper gets attached to our larger base. We'll go ahead. Just put some glue on this one. Attach that right down here. Nice and centered. And then we're going to take this one and put that right there. This back side's kind of pretty as well. So there we have that front. And we're going to take, before I adhere these, I can probably do the inside one, but I am still gonna stamp on this inside one as well. I need to go ahead and stamp on both of them before I adhere them. Just in case I make a mistake, I can fix my mess. I'm going to bring in the set Flowers of Friendship. And um, I'm gonna use this image right here. And the reason why I chose Flowers of Friendship, because I don't have the Regency Park um, the stamp set that goes along with this paper, but I, I think these look very similar to these ones, so they go pretty nicely, I think. So that's why I chose those. I'm gonna ink this up in Memento Black and stamp this on an angle. I'm going to take this larger flower, and if I look on this coordinating punch, the larger flower, the petals run vertically. I'm going to stamp it that way on a piece of scrap. And if I pay attention to the other one, See, I need to get a, another block here. If I look at the other one, it makes an X. I'm gonna stamp that with the X in mind. I'm gonna put it up here. So this is a very wide piece. I'm going to cut these separately because I haven't, because I doubt these are lined up. Oh, I'm pretty close, aren't I? Pretty close, but not close enough. I'm just going to do this. And I'm cutting them a little longer so that I can have my kind of tab to hold on to it. I think that's upside down, so I want to do it this way. There we 
go. That's pretty good. Get rid of these scraps. Then I'll do the same kind of thing at the bottom here with this little one. And you can color first before punching if you'd rather. All right. So these are just gonna be decorations, I think, for the inside layer. I'm gonna bring in my Balmy Blue and Shaded Spruce blends. And I'm gonna lay down a layer of the light Balmy Blue first. And I'm keeping a little spot in here white. That's where the light's hitting it. I'm gonna do the same sort of thing on this other one. Light's hitting the front there, that front petal. I'm going to bring in my dark now and I'm going to color around where there would be some natural shading. So these lines are some natural shadings, but also where this front petal is covering up the other petal. And of course, there's this one in the back too. So I'm going to do this same thing here and maybe outline it a little bit, give it a little bit of a rounded feel here. And sometimes it takes the blends just a little bit to blend. So you just sort of let it work itself out. They do blend a bit on their own. And of course you can come in and blend it a little bit more yourself manually. And you will be amazed, if you walk away from this and come back to it, you'll be amazed at how, how it's done some stuff on its own. There will be no sharp lines left. I'm gonna do the same thing for the shaded spruce. Now I am using some bad form. Uh, what you should be doing when you're opening your blends is not opening them over your project. Sometimes, due to some changes um, in the temperatures, and also uh, it varies with the ink color, sometimes the alcohol will run to the end a little bit and you'll, you'll have a big splash. So that's why it's best to sort of open it somewhere else. Just gonna give a little heavier color by the base. Then I'm gonna come back in with the light and blend it in a bit. There's quite a difference between the light blend and the dark blend. It may require a little bit of... You know, I'm noticing I'm probably using the, uh, or you're probably noticing I'm using the, the bullet tip end have a little bit more control with that and can press a little bit harder to blend the colors in. So there I have my flower. I'm going to put this on here. I will stamp a sentiment too, but you can see this is quite a bit softer. What color will I stamp with? I will probably stamp with a Knight of Navy because I think the Knight of Navy um, goes well in here. Let's bring in a sentiment. I think I'm gonna bring in the little card, Big Thanks. Because it really fits this card, because this is a little card. And let's see. Go ahead and mount that. Bring in our Knight of Navy.
it's almost black right now. All right. So we need the front here. There we go. You know what, this front is missing. It's missing some yellow. So let's see if I can fix that. Now this is a thank you card, so I need some I need plenty of room to write here. I'm not going to do much in here. Just maybe, I think that flower is too big for that. So I will have to do the smaller one. Let's decorate. go ahead put a little bit of glue on that and let's see I probably won't write in this corner my I'll sign my name down here all right now we need to just adhere this to the card well to the other card base take the whole card I'm going to open this up and center it on this designer series paper. Got a second to set up. And there we go. Now, what can we do to bring in, tie in some of that yellow? I bet we've got some gems we could use. We've got some lighter ones right here that are nice and soft. I think we're going to go ahead and go with that. Let me take your pick tool out. You just add some gems here. And we want an odd number, right? And we can even go off the card here, get our triangle going. All right, I don't think I like it up there. Inevitably, that's what happens, right? Probably left the glue dot there behind it. There we go, that's fine. And so there is our first card. Have a double Z card and it gets its name because if you turn it up like this you can see one Z and a second Z it's pretty easy to make all pretty straight cuts there are many many variations of this that have some different measurements and in fact next week I hope to show you a Z card that looks quite a bit different but it is still a double Z card. So let's get started. We'll look for our base dimensions. So our first base, which is this green layer here, is four and a quarter by 11. So I've already got a piece that is four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to bring in my scoring blade and I'm going to score it at two and three quarters and five. Two and three quarters, oh, and five and a half. I'll read my measurements. Then I'm going to bring in base two, and base two is this rose colored one. It measures three and one quarter by nine, so I have that already done, and I'm going to score it at three and six. That is that. We'll bring in our bone folder and we are going to accordion fold. 
goes one way and then it goes the other way. So you can see you've got your Z. And on this one, same thing. You can fold it in half and then fold back on that other score line. All right, and so there is the outside. Here is the inside. Now we need to decorate before we adhere anything. So, um, and for two reasons. You can't attach this until you have your designer series paper down here. And then when attaching the layers that go on this granny apple green piece, if you attach it at the very end, you'll just, you can do it. You just have to struggle because this doesn't lay flat, remember. So it's much easier to do that when you are, um, before you assemble. The other thing I want to mention is I have this going this way, but it can also open this way. You just have to decide what you want to do given um, what your designer series paper is that you're using or your design in general. I'm going to bring in this particular piece from the Hues of Happiness designer series paper. And to me, the flowers are going all which way, any which way, but I think I like it better in a vertical format. Do I or do I not? I don't know. Let's attach it and figure it out later. We don't have too long to figure it out, by the way, because there's not a lot to this card. But I do know I need to adhere it. So this designer series paper is just four by five and a quarter. Already makes it much prettier, right? Now for this piece, you can use designer series paper, you can use nothing at all, or you could emboss this. Let's go ahead and bring in some embossing just to show you a different look. Beginning on March 1st, there is a new online element to ordering. There are online or exclusive um, products available only online. And one of them is a three pack of embossing folders called the Basics Embossing Folders. And I'm not quite sure. This kind of looks like it's got a starfish or floral, you know, five point flower kind of pattern to it. That is one of the folders that are in that set. Um, the other ones, there's a, um, it just looks like it's a texturizing piece, kind of almost cross hatchy all the way. And then there's another one that's got some sort of circles with some designs in it. I don't know, I haven't even played with them yet. This is honestly my first time running them through, they just came in. So let's go ahead, and I only want to emboss this top piece right here. I'm gonna put it in my embossing folder, oh, and I need, yep, I'm good. The fold is gonna to have to go through first, and I'm gonna line this up right to the edge here. Goes in just a little bit further. I'm gonna put my, these are the thicker folders, so you use the gray plate and run that through. Um, I'm not sure exactly if I went all the way. Yep, I did. Okay, and so now you can see I have this really pretty pattern on that top edge. Just adds a little bit of something different Sometimes your patterns, you don't want too many patterns because they'll compete with each other um, for designer series paper. So if I were to choose another pattern, I'd want a very, very subtle pattern on this other one. Um, maybe something like, um, you know, here's the back of one, something that has, you know, just basically some color, but no real pattern to it. 
But here's what we have. My granny apple green piece is gonna come in here, but I need to decorate this first. And I do think that I am going to, nope, I still don't know whether I'm going to put it vertical or not. A lot of this gets covered up, so it's, I think I'm gonna go horizontal. Sorry, I can't make up my mind this morning. Well, I'm recording it in the morning. That's probably half of my problem. Let's bring in a piece of two and three quarter by three. You will actually need three of these for this particular project. But right now I'm going to stamp using the Happiness Abounds stamp set. And I think I'm going to use this open flower. I use the dies with this. So, oh, this would have been pretty to do a background with. I'm going to cut this out after I stamp it. And then I'm going to do some leaves too. I don't think I'd need to die cut the leaves though. Let's go ahead and we'll just stamp those. Because I am going to stamp and die cut, we're gonna go ahead and bring in a scrap piece of paper first. We'll ink up this outline image. So pretty. We need to color it, so we'll bring in our blends. We'll need some yellow, and I happen to know that fresh freesia goes with this. I don't have gorgeous grapes, so I'm just gonna use some fresh freesia on this. There's, a, there's quite a bit of surface. I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tip. Remember when you use the brush tip, you wanna be very careful and use a very light touch because you don't want to damage the end of the brush. Now on this front label here, or this front um, piece, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp some leaves. And I think I will stamp in granny apple green. Just stamp some leaves all around. My flower is gonna go on top of it. Go ahead and take the light granny apple green color those leaves in. All right, I'm gonna die cut this flower and be right back. Okay, so here we have our flower and we're going to pop it up on this layer. Let's see how we want it to arrange. All right, so a lot of my leaves aren't showing. How about if I do something like this? I can do that or I could re-stamp it. I think I kind of like it off-center just like this. Let's go ahead and pop that up on dimensionals. Cut some of my edges off to save Breaking out a new package. I do like breaking out new packages, but I also like using up what I have. Okay. 
If I wanted a little, another leaf there, you know what, I do. I do, I do, I do. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stamp another one. And color, I should have done that beforehand. Now let's see what I've got. Yeah, now I've got something that's a little bit better. I'm gonna have this just right up to the edges here, maybe a little bit over. So this is a vertical piece here. And how do I like it? Do I like it up here? I think I do. I think I'll put a little sentiment down here. I need to not stamp when I'm barely awake. <laughs> there we go. So that'll that'll go in there. And we could make a little sentiment that hangs off over here, or it goes right on there. Let's see what we have for sentiments in here. Uh, we've got friend, that'll fit nicely down there. What color should we go for with a friend? What a gorgeous grape to tie in that back color. There we go. So this one will get mounted on the front green panel. Just like that. So now I'm committing that my card is gonna go landscape. And then I need to bring in my other two white pieces. And here we have the card, all finished. Before you ask yourself, wait a minute, what did I miss? We just jumped a whole bunch. I know, I'm sorry, I forgot to start the video. I had stopped it to go die cut or get some panels. And so when I came back, I realized, oh wait, I forgot. So here's what I did. I created a decorative panel for in here and I stamped on this basic white panel. If you want a larger space for you to write a sentiment, you can always put this panel in the middle and then have just the blank white one here where you can write your sentiment. Or if you like having this one seen before this one, a stamped image, that can go here and then you can write on this one, but you'll want to write on this layer before attaching it to this, this base because it doesn't lay flat. So it's hard to write with it like this. So then all I did, I'm gonna show you how I attached the Z's together. And then I just added some some gems. So let me show you what you missed, the important part on how to put this together. So I've got my two, I've got my two Z folds, right? Here we go. There are my, there are my two Z's. Holding this one closed, this inner one closed, I'm going to attach it to my card base using your adhesive of choice. Mine's always the glue. And I want to center it vertically and horizontally as best I can. Right. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to adhere it to this front panel. Now, notice this front panel only comes to just under halfway in this piece, or it's about halfway. So when I'm applying glue to this back side, I don't want to put it all over the back side because then my card will be stuck to where it's not supposed to. I'm just going to put some glue on this side. And then I fold it closed. 
And voila, the double Z. This one looks much nicer, wouldn't you agree? And honestly, I love this card. Love the colors of it. Should have brought my Hues of Happiness paper out many months ago. This fun fold is going to be one you'll need to watch the video probably a couple times or craft along to the video. Uh, I've tried to write the directions down on the template, but the video certainly helps. But this is a fun fold that opens like this. So it closes, you know, these two flaps come down here. That's how it closes flat for mailing. And then it opens up and then it, it'll stand up on its own. You can write on the back. I've written the base dimensions and, and those um, important directions on the back and the measurements are on the front. Now, this is my template and what I don't have on here are the mats. And I'm gonna show you a real card example that uses the mats. It just got to be a little bit too much to put on here. And the mats are optional. You don't have to use the mats. So we're gonna start, and I'm gonna start because I want it to fold pretty nicely. I'm gonna use a regular basic white. And you can see from my directions that you start with a base that is five and a half by eight, and we score it at two and six. So let's cut it five and a half. Sorry, I'm probably off camera here. Five and a half. And then we don't want it to be eight and a half in the other direction. We want it to be eight. Cut it eight. So here I have a piece that is five by eight and I'm going to score it at six inches and at two inches. Then I'm going to rotate it turn and cut between the score marks. I'm going to cut between the score marks. So I'm going to move my scoring blade out of the way and at one and a quarter inch. So I'm going to bring my paper over to the one and a quarter inch mark here because it's easier than using the one and a quarter that's in here. And I'm going to pick up my blade and put it at the two inch mark because remember these score marks were at two and six. So you can use the ruler that's on your cutter here. That's between two and six, and you can see it goes to those score lines. It's okay if you, you know, you're not exact. You wanna go all the way to the line though. So one and a quarter. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because this is a symmetrical card design. Two and six. And I just wanna make sure that I got this one did not go quite up to the score line. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it again and I'm gonna score, so move my cutter blade, score between the cuts at three and five. So here's, here's three and I'm going to score between the cuts and you can, oops, I don't wanna cut, I wanna score. Ooh, that was close. I'm gonna score between here. And then I'm gonna do that again at five. So I, I line it up with my, with my cut marks and I score between there. And then I'm going to score between the cut and the outer edge at four inches. So again, I'm gonna move it to four and I'm going to go from my cut mark out and from my cut mark down. Seems like a lot, I know. The hard part is over. So now you're going to take your card base and you're gonna fold toward you and burnish. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So those are the valley folds. 
And then you're going to make mountain folds on all the other score lines. So remember, there was a score line right here. I'm going to pinch that. And I'm going to pinch this one. I don't want to pinch the middle. But now this middle section has a score line here and a score line here. I'm going to pinch those. So these are our mountain folds. And so now you can see you've got that basic design. So if you, it will, it will close the way it, you know, it'll, it'll close right. You're going to burnish this to so make your nice crisp fold marks. And then you have this going on. All right. And now we just need to decorate. So I'm going to bring in some pieces and the measurements again will be on your template. But I'm going to use the mats. So I'm using the um, favorite flowers from the celebration catalog. You only have a very short time left to get this. So my designer series paper is one and three quarters by five and a quarter, and the mat is one and seven eighths by five and three eighths. You can play with these measurements a little bit if you want more of your mat shown. Again, remember you don't have to even use a mat, but we're gonna go ahead and lay this on here. Center that as best we can. And the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take this one and adhere it down to the other mat. There we go. And these two are going to go right here. I just love this is Blackberry Bliss, by the way. Beautiful, rich, rich color. And this just fits right in here nicely. Not much of a border, just a little sneak peek. So our base is white, so you'll be able to write your sentiment to the recipient on the back. And if you choose to use a colored base, which you can, then you'll probably want to add a mat of white somewhere on the back. And the sections are, you know, it, there are definite sections, and I'll show you what I mean. So if, when you go to write on the back, you know, you can write a little note here, or you can write a little note here or here. Just it gets a little bit odd if your note's going to be very long. All right, and so now I'm going to bring in some four little pieces that I've cut to fit up in here, but I'm using the green side. And these measure, what do they measure? They measure one and seven eighths by one and one eighth. And these don't get a mat. So we're just gonna apply the glue and stick them down. If you wanted to cut these smaller and mat them, you could, but I really don't, uh, it's a lot of cutting if you're gonna do that, that and um, you really don't need it. This is just pretty enough on its own. I will be leaving a couple sections undone, so not covered with designer series paper. When it's open, you're not really gonna notice it. I mean, you might notice that it's there, but a little white space is probably good for your eye anyway. there one more to go and here we go now this center piece right here is bigger than the the score this this piece right here is smaller than what we're going to put on it so we're going to put a mat on it that fits in like that and then you can stamp an image or you can take a really easy way out and let the designer series paper do the work for you which is what i'm going to do on this particular card so my designer series paper is two and three eighths by two and seven eighths and i want it um, 
portrait orientation. This one doesn't, you know, it's not super important which orientation it is. The flowers are going every which way. And there we have that. Yeah, every which way. I don't actually even really know which way they're going. We'll call it that. And then we're going to adhere it to here. And what I find is it's easiest to probably put it right on there. And when I'm putting it on here, I'll put the glue on here, but then I want to make sure this is centered. So I sort of I sort of cheat and look down at this bottom edge and make sure that the edges here are about the same distance from the edges right here. So I'm going to put some glue on here. I'm going to just lay this down here and it fits perfectly. That's the way we cut it. Same dimensions. All right, let that set up. And so there we have our card. You can see it kind of, it will close like this and it will train itself in the envelope a little bit to, to stay a little bit more shut, but the person is going to open it anyways. So it will look like that. And all we need is a quick little sentiment. I've got a piece of basic white here and I can just put a little sentiment on it. I'm going to bring in the hay there from Charming Sentiments. I could use the what's new also, but I'm gonna do the hay there. And that's this one right here. Uh, okay. And let's go ahead and stamp with the black, oh, this is too, too big for that one. We're gonna stamp with Blackberry Bliss, I guess, which is a very dark ink. I don't know if I'm gonna put something on here, like a um, an embellishment or a ribbon. And I'm gonna put it on here. Now, one of the things, I could just center it here, probably, and put on some gems. Hmm could do that, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to flag the end. I'm going to cut this off straight. If I can find my scissors, here we go. And then I'm going to flag this end over here. Cut up a little bit. And... There we go. You just want to make sure that when the card is in closed position, it's not sticking over. So there we have something that looks like that. Would it be better to have the flag on this side? Yes, it would. Can anybody tell me why? Balance. These two are going that way. Let's have this one go this way. Probably should have done it in Mossy Meadow. That would have looked nice too, but... Oh well. So now let's go ahead and restamp my hay there. And we will glue that on. Remember, it sticks off the edge a little bit, so we don't want glue everywhere. And I'm in the closed position. Go ahead and do that right there. I'm going to hold that till it sets up. Take me just a second. There we go. Let's see if we can bring in some gems. How do these purple ones go? Mm, they're not bad. What else do I have, though? Oh, you know what would be nice? I bet the butterflies would be nice to bring in here. Let's go ahead and bring in some butter brushed. Brush. Brushed brass butterflies. There we go. There's one there. 
Let's put a couple more all over the front of our card. Hmm. We need some more. We need some more. Have butterflies flying all over the place. Remember, you gotta have an odd number. So there's five. Okay, and when it's closed, it looks like this. And when it's open, there we go. So you can see I could put something over it on these white panels, but I like that white space. I think it ties in nicely. And that is that. Thank you once again for joining me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed these fun folds as much as I've enjoyed designing them for you. Just a reminder that if you would like the class kit, your order of $35 or more must be placed by Sunday, February 26th at 7 p.m. in order to qualify. And don't forget about those celebration benefits that start at $50 orders. Celebration is on its way out, so if there is anything that you are still craving from that celebration brochure or the added listing of celebration items, then go ahead and order that as soon as possible because celebration supplies are always while they last. Have a great rest of your week.